So if you've been following Mythical Ireland lately, you'll know that I've been reading this book by Bob Quinn, The Atlantean Irish. Uh, a fabulous uh, thesis and a fascinating work. I've uh, been dipping back into it again. <clears throat> um, Bob Quinn's thesis is basically that Ireland shouldn't be considered as a lonely nation on the periphery of Europe and that gets its culture from the Celtic world uh, but rather we, we should be looked at as being at the centre of significant sea routes which extend from Ireland all the way up into Scandinavia and down to the coast of Iberia and into North Africa and Quinn suggests that um, some of our culture has been influenced by uh, North Africa and by the Middle East. It really is a fascinating read. Anyway, um, I wanted to read a little bit from the first chapter of the book because it's very significant to my own work uh, and that relates to uh, Charles Valency, who if you read my book Newgrange Monument Immortality you'll know that Valency was a very significant uh, antiquarian explorers in explorer in relation to Newgrange but <clears throat> whose work was largely derided because he tried to link the Irish language with a Chaldean um, and uh, some of his claims were said to have been outlandish and ludicrous and all the rest however there are some real nuggets and gems in Valency's work and uh, I've referenced some of those in a chapter of uh, my book Newgrange Monument Immortality Anyway, this chapter from the Atlantean, I'm just going to read a little bit of it. Um, and if you want to read the rest, I highly recommend that you purchase The Atlantean Irish by Bob Quinn. If you have any interest in Irish history and prehistory and culture, this is a fascinating work. Charles Valency, chief engineer of Ireland from 1794, was angry when he saw what Edward Ledwich, the upstart vicar of Ahabo, Ahabo County Offaly, had written. Valency's work of a lifetime was dismissed as soporiferous and the ravings of a bedlamite. The chief engineer, who had spent years studying the customs and antiquities of Ireland through the prism of the Irish language, who had even founded the respected periodical Collectania de Rebus Hibernicus, was accused of producing a fairy labyrinth of absurdity. Valency, 1721 to 1812, an Englishman, had developed such an interest in the small island of Ireland and its people that it had inspired him to construct proof of their antiquity. He maintained that not only was their language inherited from Eastern civilizations, but that the people themselves were almost full-blooded Phoenicians. Had he not demonstrated beyond doubt that their famous round towers were the ruins of ceremonial monuments built by Persian fire worshippers? Who better than an engineer to analyse such structures? But the presumptuous Ledwich was dismissing all of this as such a tissue of Hiberno-Oriental adventures as never before appeared on paper. Ledwich, 1737 to 1823, even had the temerity to propose a system of his own. The round towers had been built by the Danes, who had also been responsible for megalithic Newgrange and constructed it in the 9th century. <coughs> Ledwich declared that it was from these wild Northmen, whom he famously claimed had preceded the Celts, together with the Saxons, that anything worthwhile in Ireland was derived. With no command of Irish, the vicar presumed to ridicule the chief engineer's linguistic discoveries and wrote that Valency could not prevent his interpretation of the traditional Irish fables from, quote, sinking under their own imbecility, unquote. So as you can see, it was rather uh, uncouth and uncivilised. The famous mythologies of the Fianna were, quote, total inventions to amuse an ignorant and barbarous people, unquote. The Irish were as nothing until the Saxons redeemed them. This criticism must have appeared outrageous to Valency. The bitter argument between Charles Valency and Edward Ledwich was paradoxical. An Englishman was proposing a substantial pedigree for the Irish. An Anglo-Irishman was declaring them to be barbarians. Each seemed to invoke the discipline of his opponent. Valency, whose training as a mil military engineer was practical, had used imagination and an Irish dictionary to construct an oriental and religion-centred past for the Irish. Ledwidge purported to be a man of God, yet used the rationalist tools of the Enlightenment to demolish such a construct 
and erect a pagan Viking cont context in its stead. If Valency was right, the Irish were civilised before the English took over. If Ledridge was correct, and the Danes had built Brunebonia, then the Irish were doubly barbarian because everybody knew that the Northmen were uncivilised. To the modern reader, to whom such questions are academic, and who reads these writings as literature rather than history, there is no doubt which is the more entertaining writer. The exuberance of Valency's speculations is definitely more attractive than the intemperate sneers of Ledwich. So do yourself a favour. Bob Quinn's The Atlantean Irish, Ireland's Oriental and Maritime Heritage. Very, very well worth the read. And if you haven't experienced uh, Newgrange Monument to Immortality, you'll be looking for the chapter that's called Valency and the Armed King, which I believe is chapter five of Newgrange Monument to Immortality, which indeed it is. Okay, and another interesting insight into the work of this man who was derided in some quarters, but who still today is praised in others.